Well, good evening and welcome to St. Michael's Soccer. This is the girls' varsity versus Bayside this evening. Friday evening here at the Fairhope Soccer Complex. I think it's also known as Manly Soccer Complex. And you got myself, Tony Madsen, and Jerry Marlowe here tonight. Jerry's on the camera. And we're just getting things underway as they just kicked off. Everybody lined up. And St. Michael Soccer, welcome to the Wild Cardinal Network. Girls Varsity versus Bayside this evening. April 12th, Friday evening. Time to get your taxes done, if you haven't already. 0-0 zero, zero score at the moment. Of course, Bayside in white and blue, and your St. Michael Cardinals in all red this evening. We have Jenna Thompson. I'm trying to get, get an idea who's out on the field for us tonight. You have uh, Jenna Thompson falling back into uh, defense, it looks like. Number 16, Edgemina Aureliano. I've got bad glasses, too. Forgive me. So we've got number six, Lizzie Stroud. Number nine is Sabrina Polito. Just trying to give you the lineup at the moment as a That's Katie Ford, number six. And Lizzie Stroud with a, sorry, that was number eight, Francesca, or Francesca Aureliano with the shot on goal. Here's Mary Ford. Took a twist to her ankle, it looks like. She's still down as the ball goes out of bounds. As the referee's timeout, I think they're concerned about Katie Ford. She's limping after turning her ankle a little bit there. She seems to be okay. She'll stretch it out. But they will substitute her, I think. Or it, maybe not. It's there we go. She is being substituted out. As Lindsay Fitz comes out to help her off the field. And we'll get going as it'll be Bayside throw in. We're on the uh, visitor or on, on the spectator side of the field tonight as the uh, time change. The sun would have just been right at our cameras. So this evening, the wild card in the network is two men in a pickup. We wanted to bring it Bayside in one of the last soccer games of the season that we'll be able to broadcast as they go into the uh, playoffs, and we expect them to go far, uh, especially the girls here. We won't be able to broadcast that at that point in time. The uh, broadcasting rights become part of the state and FHS agreement. There's Francesca. She shoots at the goal, a little bit off to the side, though. Let's have uh, Alyssa Christensen. We have one. And I look 
for a, a goalie kick from uh, Bayside here. I have one more camera. It's bad news. Jenna Thompson working the ball right in front of the camera there as she steals it away. The Bayside takes control of it, pops it back. Sabrina P uh, Polito and Amadi Key, I just noticed, running around out there as well. We also have Tatum Hoffman, number 13, and Caroline Callahan, number 21, in the forward position. There's Francesca. Francesca's number eight. And number 21, that's uh, Caroline Callahan. She came in for Katie Ford. And thank to goodness, Sam Edmondson is going to join me. That's awesome. Go ahead and grab that. How are you doing this evening, Sam? I'm I'm doing just fine. I uh, I'm excited to play because we're gonna play right after the girls. I can't wait. Bayside. Now we got how many games left on the schedule after Bayside tonight or to this evening? I believe there's four after Bayside. We still have two area games for Orange Beach, and then one more area game for Bayside after this Bayside game, and then one more just I don't know team. Okay. <laughs> And then the playoffs. How are your feelings on the playoffs coming up this year? Well, I feel really confident, especially after what co my coach has told me and what the girls' coach has told me. I feel pretty confident about how we're going to do and the girls, how, how they're going to do. Very good. And right now we're probably, well, 12 minutes into the uh, broadcast here. So about 12 minutes into the game, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Hmm. I know that uh, Bayside has been quite a challenger, even for the girls every year and us something like that or well i know the girls always win but it'll be a close game they're telling me today at school there's a speedster just went by <laughs> <It's not right. laughs> number 16 is uh jimena aurelio aureliano yeah jimena and if I saw something bad, Sam, you correct me. Hey, Mana Ariana. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> She's a senior for the team. That right there is Sabrina Polito. She plays for, like, outside special club teams and, like, special uh, fancy teams. <laughs> I think a sophomore, number nine. Well, that's interesting to know. Yeah. It's good there that uh, you see a young player uh, playing out there, but they had they are very heavy on the seniors. Mm -hmm. So the throw in the girl who just threw it in, I believe, is Isabel. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel, she might be a freshman. I was going to ask you about her name, uh, Wing Vermule. <laughs> I I need to ask her because I see her at school, but I don't like I don't. I've never heard it. Wing Vermule. Uh, I'm I'm assuming. Could be Ring Bermule, something like that. But uh, I'm very much mispronouncing that, Isabella. Uh, her parents, I apologize. I hope it was somewhat close. Throw in for Bayside. But that's Elisa who keeps clearing it out of there. Also senior. Katie Ford was uh, taken out. She had a sprained ankle, but I noticed she's about to come back in again. Good. She's really quick, if you've noticed anything from... She is fast. Watching, yeah. She seems to have one speed. All the way. Wide open. <laughs> and she's going. She's coming back in, looks like, next time she gets. Chance she gets. Yeah, she's tenacious. Uh, even at school and her schoolwork and everything, she's a tenacious person. Well, I think she's got 12 or <laughs> 13 siblings older than her, so she had to work her way. Actually, she's, a, I believe, seven, yep. second youngest of the seven. Yeah. And so she's used to uh, fighting her way at the dinner table. 
Probably for the bathroom, you name it. <laughs> yeah. Big household. But something. Oh, this ref is going to be a particular ref. He makes it so that you have to get off the field before the sub gets on. Has he done that before? I hadn't noticed. Oh, well, some they, refs don't really care. He called, actually, for the timeout for Katie. They were just, she was just going to continue to play until the ref said, no, she's limping. It's Tatum on the left wing. She finds Maddie Key in the middle. Now it's Sabrina. Looks like she took a shot. A little off to the left. It's going to be a corner kick. Maddie Key, a senior for the San Michael Cardinals, will be kicking it in. Are we on the wrong side of the 50? Are we amongst the Bayside crowd here? We are. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I could smell it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a roster for uh, Bayside. I apologize for that. I did ask. Huh. Email went unanswered. Interesting. Looks like a young coach over there. Young guy kind of coach. I don't know the coach or anybody on the team. They have a uh, Pixelot camera set up over there, if you notice. Oh, I do see that. Looks like a little birdhouse. One of those fancy, like, follows the ball camera. It does. Yeah, it, it's an interesting thing to check out. It's kind of like the huddle camera. Uh, Lizzie Ford there with amazing defense. There she's going with the ball right now. And she's able to find Francesca up top, who's probably going to find Sabrina. Oh, man. Just got stopped. Katie to the outside here. There's Katie Ford. Do we know uh, Bayside's record or anything like that? I don't Try to look at Max Preps is so uh, inaccurate that I hate to quote it. <laughs> Uh, I the boys team is probably second in the region, and I think they've beat all the other region teams. Let's see what they say if it sounds even realistic. But of course, we're first. Uh, of course, wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know about the girls though. Tamana in the middle with control of the ball. She's going to find Tatum on the outside. Switches it. Big switch. Maybe Francesca can get it here. Bounces out to Katie. Wind picking up a little bit. Yeah. Ball's just bouncing around a little bit here. Oh, he's the ball boy. A pretty nice thing going there. Oh, there we go. Into Francesca. Great throw from Jenna Thompson. She was trying to find that run to break the defense because if you can't tell, there are nine people standing right in front of the goal. <laughs> Hard to find a shot or even get through. But there's Katie Ford. Can she get there? Oh my goodness, it was so close. That was a good effort there, Katie Ford. But it's going to be a uh, goal kick for the Bayside Admirals. Anything? I don't seem to have Max Preps on that laptop or that computer, so I'll pull out this one. That is the stat computer, which for some reason doesn't have stats on it. This Bayside team is sitting back. 
really back. They've got one striker and then pretty much just a bunch of defenders. But Lizzie Ford on the defense here, keeping the ball alive. Well, kicked it out there. <laughs> it looks to me like Bayside personalizes their jerseys. <laughs> they got last names on them. Wow. That's neat. Alicia Christensen clearing it from any kind of danger zone down there. Yeah, let's see, we're throwing a 12-2 uh, and two for St. Michael's record this year, whereas Bayside is 4-3-2. and two. That's only nine games as opposed to 14. So I don't know that it's very accurate uh, as far as Bayside Academy, but they're listed as first and 4A Area 1. That can't be. Oh, that's, that's for St. Michael. That can be. So that would be the case. Absolutely. It only makes sense, too. And perhaps the Bayside Admirals have only played nine games. That's a, that is possible. And they're showing them third in uh, 4A Area 1. Interesting. St. Michael being first, as far as the win-loss in region play, St. Michael being first, 4-0, tied with Orange Beach at 4-0. They haven't played them at all yet, so they haven't played each other. Mm -hmm. And then Bayside Academy is 3-1. and one. Yeah. UMS Wright, 2-5, and five, and Satsuma 0-7. Oh so this is a big game, actually. For the girls, yeah, absolutely. For the girls, I know that Orange Beach is actually pretty good. They're both undefeated in region play. Yeah, and they show uh, eleven zero oh, and one is what they're showing on Max Preps as far as an overall record. So no losses on the season and one tie is what Max Preps is again. Now this is oftentimes not the most accurate thing because it relies really on parents going in there, or at least somebody volunteering to go in there and do it. But it should be pretty close. The standings certainly are right on. Yeah, but from what it sounds like, that's about right. Bayside third, Orange Beach second or first, and then St. Michael first. And if indeed they're three and one in region, this would, give, would be a big game. If they were to lose to Bayside, that would put them in a tie for second place. Yeah. That was a, a good effort once again to Katie Ford there. She's putting in a lot of effort, I can tell. Bayside has nothing to win, and uh, St. Michael has it all to lose tonight. Because if Bayside loses, they're still in second place, technically. Oh, yeah. If they win, then they're still in second place. Yeah, like she just got around that defender pretty easily, too. She's got good skill and end speed up here on the right side. Of course, we can see her much better than the left side. We uh usually set up the other side of the field, but... First time since the time change and the sun, of course, would have come right at us here in, in no time, especially during the boys' game, I imagine. Yep. If the sun's setting about 7.30. We did do the uh, – <clears throat> we were out – oh, there's a shot on goal. Yep. Tatum Hoffman, number 13. Go, but last night the Wild Cardinal Network was out at the Loxley Field for the softball. Uh, game, whereas uh, the softball, they were down 9-4 to four in the third inning, and they came back and won the game. Wow. Exciting game. Yeah, sounds like it. That's coached by Coach Phelps. Phelps. Coach Phelps, that's correct. Mm -hmm. We have uh, guest commentators. This is Dakota Bott. One of the uh, – she is transferred into uh, St. Michael, so she's ineligible to play, but on the uh, softball team. So she's dialed in on the players. Been a great help to us. They're going to call a foul there. The uh, girls' JV softball team has a tournament this uh, tomorrow up in Thomasville, which I believe is a good distance away. It's up by Birmingham, I think. Man, 
but they take place in a tournament now st tomorrow. And so there's some of their eighth graders get a chance to play, and Dakota Bott is getting a chance to play as well. That's good. That was Alicia Christensen. Yeah. Okay. She took the free kick there. Now Bayside's broken loose. That's our goalie. Man. I remember. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I can't see your number. Can you? Reagan Gregory. Reagan Gregory. She's that actually a, a seventh grader. That was a nice job. She looks young. Uh, she does, actually. But she is a very skilled. I was talking to Coach Wilbur, who's one of the teachers at San Michael as well. And she knew Reagan. Reagan Gregory from uh, like a club and, and those kinds of things. Apparently she's really good, which is why she's starting varsity as a seventh grader. She had a good stop right there. Aggressive to go out and get the ball rather than sit and wait for the bay side to come at her. Is that a good soccer goalie trait to have i mean to, to be aggressive yeah. like she did there i mean she really she you know by doing that of course she leaves the goalie open should she miss that ball then oh this is good that was a great play can francesca get to it in time looks like she can but couldn't quite get the cross in but yes absolutely so, so a lot of goalies will think that they just need to stay in front of the goal which is probably a big mistake because i prefer my goalie to be way more aggressive to go get that ball because they can use their hands like, she could run out there and grab it while the uh, striker for Bayside had to use her feet. Excellent point. So use those to your benefit. Be aggressive about it. Maybe her, give her big gloves, too. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she looks a little tired there. Was that Francesca? That was Sabrina. Sabrina mm -hmm. with the corner kick. Maybe the wind caught it. Yeah. Brought it behind the goal. So a Great goal call. kick for Bayside. The wind is going that way. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Man. We have been, uh, should be about 20 minutes into the first half. 40-minute halves, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we're about halfway through the first half, approximately. There is no uh, s score uh, scoreboard out here or any clock of any way. So we're just we started right about the same time. There's a shot on goal. We shot it started right about the same time that the game did, and it's showing 23 minutes into the broadcast. They stopped for a uh, briefly for an injury. Still zero to zero. A little slow developing game. There's there hasn't been a lot of. Uh, Striking at the goal, I guess so that's probably not the right term, but uh, forgive my <laughs> terminology, but there hasn't a lot of, been a lot of shots on goal this evening. No, shots on goal is perfect. Uh, yeah. yeah. I I think uh, St. Michael has had more time on this side of the field, or the whole game has been more on, on the Bayside side of the field. So St. Michael has been on offense longer, but you're right, just not – not too many, like, really good shots on goal. Some kind of, like, passes into the goal, but not, no real, like, shot shot yet. But and one of the things to point that to is, I mean, they've got so many defenders out here. Yeah, that's, that's true. And we knew that that's what they were going to do for the boys' team, so I can definitely see it on the girls' team. Now explain that to me a little bit. Can you bring in more defenders than most times at, at, at for different occasions? Yeah, so a lot of times when a team is going to play a good team, which St. Michael doesn't do this, but a lot of other teams do, they will just bring in like four or five defenders, which right now they have four, and then they'll just put like the midfield and they'll just have them sit more on the defensive side of the field to just kind of like congest up any shots trying to take place and – it's kind of working because we haven't had any yeah. really good shots. It's so, going to stop any kind of breakaway as well, unless you know you sneak through all three of them. Yeah. There's Katie Ford. But if Katie Ford can get that, oh, oh man. Yeah. 
See, things like that can happen, mm -hmm. but you just got to figure – you got to draw the defense and the midfield out and then strike through just like they did. Yikes. I love Katie Ford with a steal. I don't, I don't think Katie's going to get another shot here pretty quick. She keeps playing like she does. She certainly – yeah. Came back from that ankle injury very well. Absolutely. And she's doing great one-two passes, which is just a very smart uh, soccer player thing to do. Just like a little pass back and forth to get in that space to be able to shoot. And, of course, with Bayside with no goals, that means our defense has been playing well as well. Yeah, Absolutely. That's Elisa and Lizzie Ford and Jenna Thompson and Isabel something. <laughs> Wing Vermule. Man, they're going to call handball on that. That was close. That was a real close shot from Francesca Ariano. Jenna Thompson out here on the right side of the field. She finds Katie. Gonna find tries to find Sabrina there. That's Katie Ford. She's got a break down there in the corner. Can she cross it in? Yes, she can. Who's there for it? That was Tatum. It was right there in front of the goal, but we just can't quite get to it because there's so many of those Bayside people. So many players down there. It is perfect weather out here tonight, though. Today, blue sky, little wind. Looks like Katie Ford is not coming off for... Nora Montgomery. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We look like we're a man down. There we go. There's a KD4 came back to the field. Something must happen. That's going to be another corner kick for the Cardinals. Yeah, that line ref is being rather particular about these subs. A little too particular. Sometimes it's just over the top. Just let the girls play. Once again, the Cardinals are trying to find some kind of break through that just swab of white jerseys. You described it well earlier, actually. They're, they're trying to congest things up, and they very much are. Yeah, that's a, it's a tactic. A cowardly tactic. <laughs> <laughs> big crowd already it is we've got actually three cameras set up but only one person running them so mr marlowe actually he's doing a pretty good job he's got two of them set right up next to each other but you can't watch for one at a time <laughs> he thought he was going to run two of them at once but he was there with both hands on him and he was ready to go yeah 
I should have timed it. People were. But we're maybe 10 minutes till the halftime or something like that. Getting kind of close. We're at 30 minutes in. Something like that. And it's still 0-0. Zero to zero. Nope. See, you need... See, that's why it's good that she's aggressive in those situations. It's good, that's Reagan Gregory, number 19, our goalkeeper. Exactly. And if she stays on that line, then they get a shot off. But if she goes out and gets it, they can't even shoot yet. There's only been two or three shots on goal from Bayside. Yeah, definitely less than the Cardinals. Definitely playing on the Cardinal side of the field. First 30 minutes here. Is that the Cardinal side or Bayside? I think this might be Bayside just because they're defending this goal. They have played on the offense most of them. And there goes Reagan again. And she's definitely, she looks really skilled. She she's seems confident in what she's going to do. There's no hesitation. She just goes right at it. And that's another thing you absolutely need as a goalie because you're like going head to head with people all the time. You can't hesitate. Ah, man. Barely a hand call. Barely. That's Jenna Thompson, number five. Yeah, number 18 is uh, Dela Anderson. First time I've noticed her out there, actually. She plays JV, but now that their season's over, she's back up on varsity. The red uniforms have nice, large, white, contrasting numbers on them. <laughs> I, I agree. I see what you're saying because I can tell the Bayside numbers do not. The white uniforms are a little less distinctive regarding the numbers. And uh, that ARF. Oh. Well, the, the line ref, also known as AR, I think. Maybe it's just line and the AR is the middle guy, but line ref will call a foul, but the AR has the uh, final say, and he was like, no, that's not a foul. So Interesting. That's why the ball kept playing, even though you may have seen a flag in the background. Center ref. I don't know. I, I don't know. They send me out here to do this, and I'm learning soccer while I go. Isn't that <laughs> nice? It's just an awesome job. Learn all kinds of terms and whatnot. Then again, I don't know that much. It's like my fourth year playing. <laughs> I just don't have any experience with soccer. That's my only problem. I, I I just don't have any experience with it. I I coached one year my girls when they were like seven or eight years old, but that was everybody running around in a cloud of dust. Ah, <laughs> oh, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> and yogurt after the game. Man, those some some of those are. Pretty good Ooh. passes coming from the Bayside people. One of the Bayside players went down a little hard. Yeah, they're going to call foul there, so that'll be a free kick. Number 88, uh, or 8, I'm sorry, Francesca. Out there, she'd be at the top of your screen. Heads right for the goalie. That's also a really good placement there, just for future reference of the ball. You kind of want to just put it right in front of the goalie. Even though Reagan was able to get it there. But if one of those Bayside girls had been attacking better, they probably should have scored off that. Oh, Tatum. There we go. Tatum Hoffman down to their goalie, who steps out front and doesn't get the ball. Man. But the ball goes out of bounds. Great play from Tatum and Francesca right there. Just couldn't quite get it. It's, the ball's rolling a little fast. The goalie disrupted it a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the danger that I talked about earlier. She got out there, she missed the ball, and then the goal was wide open. Yeah. But she didn't use her hands, did she? Didn't even try. No. Not like Reagan.
Number 14 is Lakin uh, Summerall. Saw her on defense there. Abby Callahan is out there at the moment, number four. She's also a senior. Wind is coming. The wind is picking up yep. a little bit. I don't know if it'll stay windy though. As the sun sets, it you, you in the normal would be for it to die a little bit. You might want this breeze for the for the game though. <laughs> I agree. You be kind of cool. Playing right in the middle of the field for us. It's Tatum, Tatum Hoffman chasing down the ball. And Tatum Hoffman. She was committed to Birmingham Southern until, of course, if you haven't heard the news, Birmingham Southern is closing down. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But she's a good soccer player over there and, and definitely looking forward to playing in college. It, she said she's got other offers places. She's just looking at which one she likes best now. So that was a, a surprise to me, uh, Birmingham, that Birmingham Southern announcement. Mm -hmm. My brother, Luke, plays football there. So now he's having to find another school that'll play. What year is he? He is a sophomore. Now, everything's accredited. He can transfer his classes at another university. All that. Is there. They are. Do the students lose out somehow in this situation? I think it's actually really good because a lot of places are. Or they're making it easy on the students where they're uh, giving them scholarships and they're, the classes are transferring and things like that. At least from what I've heard my brother talking about and my parents. Certainly think they would. It, it, it was certainly it was accredited right up until the point until Great it pass. So there we go. Wide open. Dela Anderson. And the Bayside defender worked her into the corner though. Good defense. It was. For the boys game, we may pull a pickup truck about at 44 yards down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> at halftime, oh, wait, no, yeah, you're right. That way, because we'll have the fan. The fans don't switch. <laughs> the girls will switch at halftime and the boys, but the fans don't switch. And we're getting really close here to halftime. Still 0-0. Zero to zero. 38 minutes run time here, so probably about five minutes left. Just one, maybe two stoppages of the clock. This is Elisa Christensen in the corner. She'll get a cross in. Oh, there we go. Maddie Key with a goal. Number 11, Maddie Key, a senior for St. Michael. And a captain. There we go. And that kick for, came from uh, who? Uh, Elisa Christensen. Elisa Christensen from the corner. That's our senior, also school president. <laughs> Nice placement there with that pass. Absolutely. And so your first score of the game, one nothing. Cardinals on top with about four minutes left to go in the half. That was great. She had a 1-2 with, I think, Francesca up here in this corner who got her to the corner, and then she crossed it over to Maddie Key who put it in. It was just great, great passing and all around. Teamwork. Teamwork. At its best. Mm-hmm. So just a few more minutes left in the half to try to build on the lead. And then as Sam has mentioned, we have a, another game right after this. The Bayside boys have traveled down here to take on the Varsity Boys soccer game. We'll be also broadcasting when they play Orange Beach as they come up here. I think it's next week. Oh, uh, yeah. We will broadcast as many games as we can before the end of the season, but I think there's only one or two more home games. I think so. And Bayside doesn't allow us to film, do they? No, at, at uh, that was UMS right. UMS. Okay. <laughs> well, we don't play them again, no. so I think we're okay there. No, Bayside has actually been very cordial to us. 
All right. That we just cannot get a signal. That's it. In the basketball arena. That's right. And you can't even call anybody when they're watching basketball down in there. So. Yeah. Because we do play Bayside eventually. And then in the football arena, you got to sit up on top of the hill and then put your Wi-Fi spot on top of a tripod, that on top of the truck, and <laughs> get yourself a signal. Which the uh, football team, I believe, is traveling to Bayside week one or week two. Week two. That's halftime. Halftime here at uh, St. Michael versus Bayside girls varsity soccer. Nice crowd here this evening. We got Sam Edmonston. Jerry Marlowe is on the camera. We'll see if we can't get him to come over here and give us a shout out at halftime. And for me, I think it's about time to start. Sam's going to have to step away. <laughs> Warming up for my Warming game. Warming up for the game. All right. Well, good luck, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. That was excellent. Thank you. I love it.
All right, we are back. There we go. We are back live at Manly Soccer Complex here in Fairhope as the St. Michael Cardinals girls varsity soccer team is taking on Bayside Admirals. They're up right now, one to nothing, as we're just kicking off the second half. A little bit windy. I'll try to keep my head turned, so we'll keep the wind off the microphone for you. We have pretty much close to the same lineup as before. Of course, they've switched directions on us here as now the Cardinals are heading from right to left and Reagan Gregory is off to our far right all alone at the goalie she had two or three real nice stops in the first half but most of the action took place with St. Michael's offense. We had Sam Edmonston as a guest commentator in the first half. He filled us in a lot of the uh, strategy going on in the soccer game as I'm a little bit inexperienced with soccer. It's Tatum Hoffman with the ball, number 13, off to Katie Ford. Number 11 is Maddie Key. Number 8 out there, Francesca. Francesca, I'm sorry. Arlano, I think is how you would pronounce her last name. Forgive me. Francesca and her sister. Plays on the team as well, I'm assuming. Uh, Jimena, number 16. Oftentimes out in the field right there. I don't see her at the moment. It's number 18 fighting for the ball right there. Dela Anderson. Off to Alicia Christensen down in the corner. And it'll be a... Uh, Side kick, it looks like, for Bayside. Cardinals on defense here. Shot towards the goal. And Reagan gathers it up. And strong kick out of bounds over towards Tatum. Tatum Hoffman kicks the ball across the field. Ooh, someone was tripped up there pretty good. No foul, though. It's Tatum again, number 13. Kicks the ball open to number 8. Francesca, she's headed down there, but the uh, goalie for Bayside jumps way outside to get that. Kick it back out again. It's number 16. Jimena went after it over to Francesca, and a whistle is blown. Foul, it looks like either away from the ball or something I didn't see anyway. Right. Must have been against uh, St. Michael as it looks like a uh, kick for Bayside. Again, one to nothing early in the second half. Lizzie Stroud, number three, is out there. Number 11, Maddie Key. Looking away, down towards the goal. Got a shot at it, but the uh, Bayside goalie gathers it up. That was Maddie Key, number 11, with a shot on goal there. Tatum Hoffman, number 13, 
She's working her way through the uh, Bayside defense as they're trying to congest things up there. So they're doing a very good job on defense for the most part. Uh, Bayside, both teams really, of course, with a one to nothing score at the moment. Pretty evening down at the Manly Soccer Complex this evening. A little bit of wind, but that's dying down as the sun sets behind us. Really casting some long shadows now. Fight out in front of the uh, Bayside goal and back down again in front of the Bayside goal. There's Francesca with a shot towards it, but across the way. Katie Ford over in the corner there. Sabrina, number nine, is uh, Sabrina Polito. She was right in front of the goal there. Played very aggressively in the first half, Sabrina did. Or to Francesca. Working past, they got a little shove from the Bayside player there. I think they're going to call that. As Francesca ended up on the ground. There's the yellow card for the Bayside player. And I apologize, I do not have a roster for the Bayside players. I will try real hard to get the uh, boys roster for us in between games. And again, the boys play 7 o'clock this evening on this field after this game. And we're about Nine minutes or so. I did not stop the clock right there. I'm, I'm going to stop it just momentarily to just kind of make up for that fact right there if you're watching. Clock in any way. And I'll just start it again shortly here. To see if we can keep it a little bit accurate. So about 30 minutes left to go, 31 minutes left to go in the Second half, one to nothing score. St. Michael up. Three or four more games left in the season. We play uh, Orange Beach twice yet to come, and they are tied for first place in 4A Region 1, both at 4 and 0. Bayside in second place in the region at 3 and 1. So, an important game, region standing wise, for both teams tonight. Bayside kick. Back into the field. Back out of bounds again for uh, St. Michael throw in. And that'd be Tatum Hoffman, number 13. Francesca. And back out again. That's Isabel, who threw that in, number 23. About to throw it in for uh, St. Michael. Again, that's Tatum Hoffman, number 13. She's been throwing the ball in several times in the last minute. There's Katie Ford involved in a little bit of a collision. Both players go down. Ends up ball out of bounds. Katie and Sabrina over in that corner of the field, number nine and number six, respectively. 
and back out of bounds again right away. Corner kick for uh, St. Michael. Looks like Sabrina is set to kick it in for the Cardinals. And ended up out of bounds behind the net. Goal kick for Bayside as they try to get some offense going. Sabrina with a steal. I'm sorry, that's Francesca, number eight. We also have Livy Stroud, number three. She's out here back. She's the furthest back on defense. Along with Alicia Christensen and Isabel Wingbremule. St. Michael playing a pretty straightforward game. They haven't thrown any extra defense back in the backfield or anything like that. Maintained an attacking style throughout the first half and into the second half here. But thanks to some good defense by Bayside, we just got a one to nothing score. That was uh, Sabrina with a kick towards the goal there, but off to the side. Kick in by Bayside and Right back outside again. Maybe for St. Michael. Nope, it'll be Bayside throw in. As Alicia Christensen chases the ball down far corner. Again, back on defense most of the night, along with Isabel. And here comes Bayside on a run towards the goal with an opportunity here. St. Michael stolen by Alyssa Christensen there, number seven, and took that threat away. St. Michael set to throw it in from the sidelines. Right at midfield. Looks like KD4 doing that. No. Thrown in by number 14. Lake and Sumrall. Sumralls, pardon me. Number eight, Francesca fighting for a corner into the side there. Takes a shot on goal, but saved by the goalie for Bayside. Francesca, really aggressive this evening. Especially in the second half here. Long kick by the goalie from Bayside. Alyssa 
Chase, is it down? Lizzie Stroud back on defense. Middle of the field there as she comes up and takes the ball away. And Isabel brings the ball down the field towards Francesca in her familiar corner spot. Back across the field and kicked out by Bayside. Trying to see if we had any substitutions here. Just anybody new on the field? 14, number 7, number 22. Uh, Nora Weldon Montgomery came in. She's in the uh, number 22. Middle of the field there. Just about, just closest to the ball right now. Just about to kick it away, but that's. Miss Montgomery in the first time I in the action tonight. I don't see anybody else new over there. Is Katie Ford set up in position here? All three Bayside players. There's Katie Ford looking for a shot. Not quite though. Couldn't quite get to it. She kind of saw her creeping into position there. And the ball headed her way. Katie Ford is number six. And it's almost like her and Francesca kind of flipped sides of the field there. There was a breakaway by Bayside, headed straight for the goal, and Reagan Gregory comes out and grabs it. Beats it down the field towards Katie. Here goes Katie Ford across midfield. Trying to get it down towards Francesca, but beaten away. Number 11 is Maddie Key. Number 23, Isabel Wingbermule. Jocelyn for the ball there as Francesca tries to get it in front of the goal. Batted away. It'll be out of bounds. Have a player down. It's Katie Ford again. Nobody, nobody being substituted as of yet, though. She just had to kind of stretch it out. She's good to go still. I don't see anybody coming in for her. So she'll continue to play. Looks like we have a corner kick. Or no. Let's try to stop the clock again. I'm not sure what the pull-up is at the moment. Little, I'm I'm confused. Uh, there seems to be a little confusion on the field. Uh, people are handing, in, holding up their hands like they don't know what's going on. Just kind of like I am. So there's a, a flag, an orange flag for something. And Bayside was flagged for something, uh, a foul, and they are sending a player side. There is a player who came out of that discussion and is headed towards the sidelines. I'm, I'm still a little bit confused. He showed an orange flag. I'm a, forgive my ignorance. But definitely uh, one of the players, oh, then she's turned around and she's come back. Uh, a different player heads off. But a substitute comes on. So there's, didn't lose any players. I'm, I'm just...
foul of, of, of some kind against uh, Bayside. They're discussing it. But it ends up being a kick. Francesca is getting a uh, goal kick here or a foul kick. Just an un unusual chain of events there. I think we're about ready to go again. I'm going to start the clock anyway. Because I think we should be playing. If I could get you an explanation of what was going on, I would. I almost should stop the clock again. I just don't know what's... Are they going to give her a... Reposition the ball from where she's going to kick it in. Five feet to the left is better somehow. And we're <laughs> almost ready to go. Uh, maybe it's from the spot of the foul that they're trying to kick it from. And he's trying to be uber technical of that. But we are now ready to go, it looks like. It's Francesca. Ready to put it in in front of the basket. Gets through the base side field, but off to the uh, back. We're about 21 minutes left, approximately. I'm not sure how long the clock stopped there and how long it should have been stopped, but uh, we should be fairly close. Look at the clock on the scoreboard there again, one to nothing. St. Michael on top. Francesca comes across the floor, kicks it out of bounds. Referee gave it to the St. Michael Cardinals, much to the chagrin of the uh, Bayside fans. Back underway. 23 is Isabel again. She's on defense as she overtakes the Bayside player there and steals the ball and a whistle. Un unsure of, they call the foul against uh, Bayside there, I think. So St. Michael gets the ball back down on their side of the field, kick towards the goalie who just boots it. Floats around until Maddie gets her head around it. And another stoppage of play. The foul. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to start to stop the clock when the referees. And again, there's just uh, not a real clear picture from the referees about what's going on. There's a yellow card. Against yellow card against the uh, Bayside goalie. I I have admitted my lack of experience with soccer, but I have not seen that before. There's a yellow card for the a goalie for Bayside. Stoppage of play, and now we'll get a foul kick for St. Michael. I 
I started my clock again. I'm not sure if I should have, but people look like they're ready to go. Everyone except the referee is ready. Almost look like he's telling the Bayside players where to play. As picked off by the substitute goalie. Going down to the bottom half of the second half here. Approximately 19, 18 and a half minutes left in the game. One to nothing score. That Bayside about to throw in. Then the Bayside goalie is allowed to substitute back in after that play. Side's getting a little excited. Ball's headed towards our goal. Katie Ford, number six, takes the ball at midfield. Passes it across to uh, Sabrina. Back to Isabel, number 23. Back and forth midfield action at the moment. Oh, and a trip up there, and it's going to get a foul, it looks like. So both players ended up on the ground, but number seven is getting the uh, worst of it here as far as uh, where Alicia Christensen still down as Lindsay Fitz comes out to see of the injury. And a good number of St. Michael fans here tonight. The boys' soccer game getting ready to go behind us. They're warming up behind us this evening. And Alicia Christensen with a collision on the field is still down at the moment as Lindsay Fitz checks on her. Helps her off the field. Still a bit of a limp to her, but she seems to be okay, thank goodness. Grimaces with a little bit of pain. I probably should have stopped the clock there again. I'm going to stop the clock for 30 seconds or so to kind of let that catch up. And I'll restart it down on St. Michael's side of the field again as they shoot down towards the goal, but picked off by the goalie. Off to the side will be St. Michael's throw in. Number 23 is Isabel Wingbermule. Into Katie Ford, number six. Number 21 is uh, Caroline Callahan. She's wearing a uh, black brace on her knee. Don't remember that from basketball or anything. I hope she's okay. There's a little shove from behind by Bayside, but I've seen that several times tonight, and it doesn't seem to be called. This is a good hard job. Wait, Frank, wait a minute. It's Francesca, number eight, work to bring that across the field. Thrown in by Isabel to Katie Ford again. And then there's a there's a collision and a foul called.
That was number nine. That's uh, Sabrina Polito with that foul. A couple of substitutions coming on for uh, Bayside now. Fresh legs. Oops, I forgot to start that clock again. They stopped it again for this foul, so I, it, it, the clock is not anywhere near accurate. There he goes. It started again, so we're approximately 15 and a half minutes left to go in the game. That is an unofficial clock up in the corner. Oh, and another collision and another foul. And here comes out a card. There's a yellow card. And they're going to call that actually a number nine, uh, Sabrina Polito. So he showed a little bit of frustration by Sabrina. I think uh, Jimena came in for her. I think. It's number 21, Caroline Callahan. Katie Ford, right there, number six. Heads down the field with three defenders on her. Gets between all three of them. Oh, and she's tripped up. And another foul called. No yellow card or anything like that. Just a everyday foul, apparently. Be a St. Michael kick on goal, though. It's Francesca. Number eight, set for the kick, kicks it over. Why? Still, some more of a lot of a uh, lot of aggressive play going on. And another whistle. A lot of stoppage in the last five minutes or so of the game has been. Very aggressive from both teams. Again, that's an unofficial clock. We're approximately four and a half, 14 and a half minutes left to go in the game. Katie Ford takes brunt of that kick but stops it. Number three was Lizzie Stroud there. There's some more. Uh, jostling going on and a uh, foul called. A little bit of uh, cramping going on. I believe that's Francesca. There it is. A little bit of uh, cramping going on towards the end of the game. He, she did. Uh, referee calls for a substitute in and is, is making her go off. I'm not sure if she was one of the substitutes or not, but he, the referee is working it off. We had three people go off and two come on, as far as I could tell. Which, there we go. Okay. Francesca was forced off the field because of that injury timeout. And she's standing on the side, though, ready to come right back in again. Number 11 is Maddie Key. Let's kick that ball for us. Isabel, number 23, fighting that away. Back to Maddie. Down in the corner towards Tatum Hoffman. Goalie kick for broken up by Sabrina, who's back in the game. To the corner. 
corner, Katie Ford. She boots it into the middle of the field in front of the goal. Tatum chases it down, passes it out to Maddie. Start my clock. Next time he calls a foul, I won't stop my clock. And out of bounds. Throw in for Bayside. Nora Weldon Montgomery. Nora came in uh, for Francesca. Number 22 there. This will be a uh, kick for St. Michael. And the referee. As the referees talk it off in the corner again, and I imagine the clock would be stopped here normally because he wouldn't be wasting our time like that, would he? And it looks like Bayside ready to take a kick here when we finally start to go. He's going to... Uh, we have a yellow card to number 11 for Bayside after speaking to the uh, side judge, if, he's, if that's what he's called. And so she'll have to come out and be substituted for... Did not see what might have even come close to causing that, but... A yellow card issued against a Bayside player. And he's starting to play again as Bayside set to kick. St. Michael on defense. And Reagan Gregory, our goalie, jumps up and grabs the ball. Puts, any, puts an end to any opportunity for Bayside, and they work it down to their side of the field again. And there's another trip up and another foul called. So St. Michael gets a kick as Maddie Key kicks it in. And there's a hold um, that wasn't called as Katie Ford was clearly held. But and another whistle. Ball given to uh, Bayside. And again, Reagan Gregory smartly steps up and grabs the ball. Boots it out of the way, out to Katie Ford, to Dela. Number 18 is Adela Anderson. Number six, Katie Ford. And back to the middle of the field again towards Francesca. Nora Weldon Montgomery. On that side of the field along with Tatum Hoffman. Far side of the field, if we can even see him from here. Back towards the goal, but caught in the air by the Bayside goalie. Should be about 11 minutes or so left in the game. Another whistle. Ball out of bounds for Bayside as they'll kick it in or throw it in. And here's an opportunity for Bayside as it busts loose a little bit, but Tatum Hoffman 
down on defense there. And that's Maddie Key. I'm sorry, number 11. Tatum is number 13. I may not even get in the field. Got Lizzie Stroud, number three down there. Kayla Anderson. Midfield, Katie Ford. Laura Montgomery. Stella. Anderson at midfielder, number 18. Throw in by Bayside. Bayside desperate for an opportunity here. Number 23 is Isabel, and number three is Leslie Stroud. And number seven there, Alicia Christensen involved in the defense as it's kicked away. The Bayside throw in right here. Oh, whistle. Stop in action. It's not a throw in. It's a kick. Not sure what. See now, they, they got to stop it. It is a throw in. I, I don't know what the difference is. Why one would be a throw and one a kick. I'm not sure. But a throw in for Bayside. Down on their side of the field. They're looking for St. Michael defense to step up here. There they get the ball out of Dangerous way. All of a sudden, Bayside has got a lot of energy. I mean, we're playing a lot on their side of the field now. With just under eight minutes or so to go. Foul on Bayside, and we'll have a uh, kick. Uh, Alicia Christensen. Wind has definitely died down for us here a little bit as the sun is setting behind us. Katie Ford fighting for the ball. Takes it across the field. Takes a slide. As a couple players end up on the ground. No foul call. Maddie Key, number 11, and she bats the ball away. Bayside with a bit of an opportunity here. They're outnumbered by St. Michael. Though. Here we go. St. Michael takes it away. Brings it down the field. Passes to Maddie. And Maddie's breaking free. Shot on goal. And it's good. Maddie Key straight down the field towards the goalie. Able to dribble it past her. And the second goal of the night for St. Michael. Two to nothing now. About six and a half minutes left to go. Has a nice drive down the field by Maddie Key there, straight at the goalie. And in. Nicely done by Maddie. And 
and two to nothing with approximately six minutes left to go in the game. Matty Key breaking up that pass right there. Hit her by Bayside. Isabel gets in on the uh, defense for St. Michael. Kicked out by Sabrina. Bayside back down towards their side of the field again. Out by Alicia Christensen. Number 14 is uh, Lake and Summerall. Uh, midfield for Bayside is another opportunity presents itself, but our goalie, Reagan and Gregory, having a fine game this evening. Steps out and grabs that ball. Katie Ford works her way down the field. And see how bad my clockwork was. I showed five minutes left in the game, and that is the uh, end of the game. No, I was a little bit confused. Again, my, my apologies. I don't have that much experience with soccer. I was confused when he started and stopped the clock sometimes. But we end up with a victory, 2 to nothing, for your St. Michael Cardinals this evening. Stay tuned to the Wild Cardinal Network. In just a few minutes, we'll uh, be back with another broadcast for the uh, boys' varsity soccer as they take on Bayside again this evening, a Friday evening here in uh, Fairhope, a beautiful spring evening as the wind is dying down and we look forward to a real good game out of the boys next but uh, right now the uh, girls I think they improved to 13 and 2 on the year and just three or four more games left in the season before they head into the playoffs and if you remember last year they did really well losing in the uh, state championship game so the playoffs are looming uh, also our two games against Orange Beach and Orange Beach is tied right now in first place with St. Michael's. So some good soccer yet to be played this season. The Wild Cardinal Network will bring you that Orange Beach home game for certain. And we'll travel to Bayside if we can. But again, thank you very much for joining us at the St. Michael YouTube channel. Like and subscribe for this uh, broadcast if you're watching. We appreciate your efforts and your support. St. Michael, defend us.